E. coli and a variety of other bacteria use flagella to swim toward chemical attractants, such as amino acids and carbohydrates present in media. The bacteria use a mechanism called chemotaxis, in which they sense chemical gradients and modify their motility in response. The flagellar rotor can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. In the counterclockwise mode, all flagella sweep behind the cell, forming a rotating bundle that propels the organism straight ahead in what is called smooth swimming or a run. If the flagellar rotors suddenly switch to a clockwise rotation, the bundle is disrupted and the bacterium tumbles in a random fashion. Once the rotors switch back to a counterclockwise rotation, the bacterium will have reoriented itself, changing its swimming direction. The natural bias of a flagellar rotor is to turn in a counterclockwise rotation. However, the flagellum switches directions randomly at a particular rate, which is why the cell periodically tumbles. The key to chemotaxis is suppressing the number of tumbles as a cell moves from a lower concentration of a chemical attractant toward a higher concentration. The switching is minimized if the cell disables enzymes called Ki-A kinase. Ki-A kinase is found attached to a protein called Ki-W, which acts as an intermediary protein between Ki-A and a chemoreceptor called a methyl-accepting chemotaxis protein, or MCP. When an attractant binds to the receptor, the cytoplasmic domain of the receptor changes conformation. The conformational change thereby inactivates Ki A. In this state, the cell is detecting a chemical attractant, deactivating Ki A, and maintaining its straight ahead run. In contrast, when no attractant binds to the receptor, Ki A becomes activated. Activated Ki A uses ATP to phosphorylate itself, and then it transfers the phosphate groups to a protein called Ki Y, which regulates flagellar rotation. A few other proteins called key B and key R participate in sensory adaptation, but we will ignore them for now. When key Y is phosphorylated, it binds to the rotor of the flagellum, reversing its rotation to clockwise. The cell tumbles and then faces a new direction in which to possibly encounter the chemical attractant. Thus, when no attractant is bound, key A is active, key Y is phosphorylated, and the cell tumbles frequently. To keep the response dynamic, the stimulus is quickly terminated by the action of a protein called Ki-Z, which removes the phosphate from Ki-Y. Dephosphorylated Ki-Y cannot bind to the rotor, and the flagellum goes back to its normal, smooth-swimming, counterclockwise rotation, now propelling the cell in a new direction. Although we've described the action of each protein as if only one exists in the cell, the cell actually contains many molecules of each. As shown in this computer-generated image of E. coli, MCP sensory proteins assemble as clusters at the poles of the cell. A cluster at one pole is depicted here. Flagellar rotors are shown as blue and purple. Key Y proteins are shown as black dots, while the phosphorylated versions of Key Y are red. A high rate of tumbling depends on a high concentration of phosphorylated key Y. Let's look at the process again, this time considering a phenomenon called adaptation, which involves the proteins key B and key R. Because the MCPs act more or less in unison, for simplicity, we will show just one MCP here. When no attractant is present, key A is active and phosphorylated. Key A phosphorylates both key Y and key B. The key Y and key B proteins undergo continual turnover, losing their phosphates spontaneously, or in the case of key Y, by the action of key Z. Key Y and key B are phosphorylated by key A as part of a continual cycle. A high level of phosphorylated key Y results in a high frequency of tumbling. If attractant is added to the environment, the attractant binds to the receptor, causing the inactivation of the bound key A proteins. Key A gives its residual phosphate groups to key B and key Y. However, after a while, key B and key Y lose their phosphate groups and become inactive, 
and they no longer have Ki A available to phosphorylate them again. With fewer phosphorylated Ki Y proteins, the cell tumbles less often, swimming straight ahead while sensing the chemical attractant. It's advantageous for the cell to move to a higher concentration of the attractant. As part of a sensory adaptation mechanism, the cell becomes adapted to the current concentration of attractant by the action of Ki R. Ki R slowly adds methyl groups to receptors, preferentially methylating attractant bound receptors. As the struts of a receptor become methylated, they come together, returning the Ki A proteins to an active state. Activated Ki A can again phosphorylate Ki Y and Ki B. As Ki Y proteins become phosphorylated, they are able to bind to the rotor the cell returns to a high rate of tumbling, even though it is in the presence of attractant. The cell has adapted, and its tumbling provides the cell with an opportunity to swim into an area with a higher attractant level. With the higher concentration, more attractant molecules are likely to bind the receptors, and when they do, they trigger the deactivation of the associated Ki A proteins. As a result of less Ki A activity, Ki B and Ki Y are also phosphorylated less. With fewer phosphorylated Ki Y proteins, the cell tumbles less and swims straight ahead more. Again, Ki R adds methyl groups to the struts of the receptors. The heavily methylated struts come back together, allowing the Ki A proteins to become activated again. The number of phosphorylated Ki B and Ki Y proteins increases. Thus, the cell adapts to the new, higher level of attractant, and the cell returns to a high rate of tumbling. How does a cell become sensitive to attractant again if it is reoriented to swim away from attractant? The critical molecule is Ki B. The phosphorylated form of Ki B opposes the activity of Ki R by clipping off the methyl groups that Ki R has added. If a cell tumbles into an area of little attractant, the receptor eventually gets reset by losing its methyl groups to Ki B activity. When attractant is removed, the receptors are not methylated as much because Ki R prefers to methylate receptors that are bound by attractant molecules. Ki A kinase is active and phosphorylates Ki Y which will increase the frequency of tumbling and the likelihood the cell will reorient to encounter attractant. Unmethylated MCPs are again sensitive to attractant binding, which will again suppress the frequency of tumbling events so the cell can continue to swim into the attractant. The result of changing the frequency of tumbling as the cell moves away from attractant, increasing the frequency of tumbles, or toward an attractant, Decreasing the frequency of tumbles means the net movement of the cell will be toward higher and higher concentrations of attractant. Because attractants typically indicate a food source is nearby, chemotaxis is an important mechanism for survival in the natural environment.